Hello and welcome. Um, it's been a while since I uploaded a, a book chat. Uh, yeah, I, I got busy with some other things and fell behind a bit in my reading and in my video making and in my video watching, uh, but things have sort of calmed down now. I hope uh, I can get back to uh, back back to my routine pretty soon. Um, but today I'd like to chat a bit about Hard to Be a God. This is the most recent book that I finished. Um, and following this chat, I will also touch base briefly on what I'm currently reading as well as what I'm planning for my, my next read, but Hard to Be a God, uh, by Boris and Arkady Strugatsky, the Strugatsky brothers. Uh, this was originally published in 1964 in Russian, in Russia, uh, then the Soviet Union. Um, and this particular edition was published in 2014 by the Chicago Review Press, and it was translated by Olena Bormashenko. Um, and my understanding is that the original English language translation of this was came out in 1973, and that English language translation uh, was from a German translation. And so this edition actually was translated directly from the original Russian text. It's my understanding. Elena Bormashenko also translated the edition of Roadside Picnic by the Strugatsky brothers that I uh, read last year, um, which I'll put a link down into the details below uh, for that chat, for that book. Uh, it's another Strugatsky brothers book that I really enjoyed. But yeah, so hard to be a god. You know, I wanted to read this since I read Roadside Picnic last year. Um, I got a a lot of comments on um or quite a few comments on Roadside Picnic video chat, book chat that I did, as well as some messages. Um, and several people recommended that I read various other works of the Strugatsky Brothers and Hard to Be a God was one of those that uh, got mentioned quite often. And uh, so for this particular uh, read, uh, I buddy read this book uh, with Richardson Reads. Uh, so that was kind of fun to to read uh, read through it together and sort of share, share our experience and ideas uh, by email um, that we uh, both experienced with reading Hard to Be a God. But yeah, Hard to Be a God is apparently one of the better known, um, better th highly thought of works of the Strugatsky brothers. Very popular um, in Russia still today. Has been translated um, in quite a number of languages and um, there's been a movie made of it in Russian, a Russian movie by uh, Alexei German. Uh, was the uh, filmmaker, and um, Roger Ebert said of Hard to Be a God movie, um, he gave it four stars, so he gave it his highest rating, and he says, Roger Ebert, you know, the film critic says, is not only an unforgettable masterpiece, but probably one of the capital G great films. So I'd like to see it, although I understood from uh, Roger Ebert's review of the, the movie version that it's quite bleak and grim, um, and I can see how because of the subject matter that's in the book, which I'll talk about more here in a bit, but I'll link to the trailer too hard to be a god movie version uh down in the comments below just because it's kind of interesting to see just sort of the atmosphere it really does have the atmosphere of the book although it's quite a bit more looks quite a bit more bleak i think than i what i actually thought of when i was reading the book but what the book is about is it's an earth-like planet it's not earth uh, but there are earthlings there so um it's a planet that's in the development of basically what we would think of as Middle Ages medieval. Um, and so what, it, what the uh, people of Earth have sent um, people who are kind of observers, um, I think they're called historians, and they wear a, a sort of a jewelry, a uh, piece of jewelry that's got a camera in it, and so they, they transmit this back to Earth. Um, to Moscow, to an institute at Moscow who, I guess, studies other planets to get the idea from this book that this is not the first time that the people of Earth have done this, um, that they've done it uh, to multiple planets. Um, but the, the people there, uh, the observers, um, the main one that we that is our main character in the book, his name is Don Rumata, and he, um, you know, of course, has... Um, has technology and has some uh, different... Um, attitudes than what's present on the planet. Like I said, it's a medieval type development of a planet, of this planet. But the thing is, you get an idea, or I got the idea, that the planet maybe had been going about to flower maybe into a renaissance, um, but it 
had taken a, a step back because there had been a sort of a weakened monarch and then one of the ministers, Don Reba, has sort of manipulated the um, the monarch and um, has really created sort of a repressive uh, society. He is very anti-intellectual. So and people who are considered literate, who are called literates, uh, bookworms, um, basically any educated people are very suspect. And so they're actually persecuted um, quite drastically, quite, quite uh, you know, cruelly. Um, and so their lives are in danger, actually. Um, and so it's a very anti-intellectual sort of repressive movement that has moved through the uh, this society, and it's called the grayness. And so the book basically takes place with our main character, Don Ramada, who is this person from Earth, observer from Earth, who has the ability to interfere but can't, sort of like the Star Trek Prime Directive from Star Trek, if you're familiar with Star Trek, only not, they can have interfere, they can influence things, but they, they can't, you know, they're very careful about how they interfere, they're very, I guess, they use, um, they're, they're very sort of wise, we learn about how they, how they interfere with planets, but um, Don Ramada, uh, the main character, uh, sort of navigates this shifting political scene um, and influences it where he thinks he can, um, you know, that would be beneficial, and it's sort of his experience. So I don't want to give a lot else away about the book because it did sort of get quite a bit of, um, I wouldn't say it was like a page-turner action book, but it, it had a certain level of, of um, you know, it definitely, it, originally when I first started reading it, it was a little hard for me to get drawn into it. I don't know if that's because of the book or because of what else I had going on uh, with work and stuff, but, um, you know, but about midway through the book, uh, it really picked up and, um, you know, there's sort of a, uh, a lot happens there. Um, so yeah, my thoughts about the book, um, one thing about the hard to be a God, the title itself, this is mentioned quite a bit. This is actually mentioned in the book, uh, because a God, this is a, our main character, Don Ramada, you know, is from a, in a, a future earth. So a technolo not only technologically more advanced than this society that he's in right now, but also more advanced, uh, I think, ethically, morally, politically. And so he's sort of mired in this um, sort of brutal um, and cruel and authoritarian and totalitarian and oppressive and repressive uh, and regressive um, society. And so the hard to be a god is trying to decide, you know, where to interfere or where to intervene and what would make things worse versus what wouldn't. So, you know, it's sort of hard to be a god, hard, you know, it's hard, hard decisions to make uh, because to this sort of more primitive society, he is sort of godlike. They don't know who he is, uh, so he's in the the people from Earth are actually in um, they're they're um, they're in secret. They're they're not known um, by in general by the people on the planet. So they're in they're there. Um, they fit into the society. Um, so they've been sort of infiltrated the society, but they they're not. No, so they're not thought of as gods by the people. This is just his own reflection, I think. Um, and then, you know, the cool thing about that, though, was the Ramada, the main character's sort of struggle um, in in this society. He was afraid that he was getting brutalized by it. So, you know, he's immersed and mired in this brutal sort of seeing this cruelty and this um, ignorance um, because the society, uh, you know, like I said, uh, has basically persecutes anybody with any knowledge or any learning. And so he's constantly, you know, talks of, or thinks about how, you know, worrying that maybe he's getting, you know, desensitized to uh, things because this is how we are, right? Humans are. And so you, you're around something uh, a lot, then, you know, you, it just sort of becomes the normal. And this this sort of reminded me of the book that I recently read called Night, which was a Holocaust memoir by Elie Wiesel. And he, Elie Wiesel talked about this, you know, nonfiction work, his experience in the Holocaust, the Jewish Holocaust of World War II, where he also felt like he was becoming brutalized. He really fought against in the camps, in the concentration camps, the Nazi concentration camps, that he really 
fought to maintain his, you know, humanity and um, not become brutalized by his surroundings. And this is sort of what Don Ramada um, talks about um, our experiences, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I thought that was really sort of an interesting um, sort of parallel. Um, and then this idea of grayness. So the uh, other kind of takeaway that I had from it was the... Don Reba, the, the minister who's sort of taking over from the king and instituted this repressive uh, totalitarian regime, um, his um, sort of his, I guess, secret police force, police, not secret, but police force was called the Greys. And this grayness is called the grayness is this anti-intellectual sort of movement that's really supported by um, by you know the non-intellectual by the main population the masses um, and so the grayness you know this idea of grayness how uh, because this to me was real cool about the book about how um, how societies can move forward then they can they can just as easily move backwards um, and so this grayness you know when the grayness sets in the grayness is this thing that's a uh, a, a totalitarianism, sort of, and not necessarily uh, put on the people um, as far as uh, from an outside force. It's like they want it themselves. They want this totalitarianism themselves. They want this anti-intellectualism themselves. Themselves, and so this grayness. When the grayness sets in, that's when societies move backwards. Um, I think you know was sort of one of the themes of this book. Um, so you know, I think I'll I'll stop the chat with that. Those are kind of my main takeaways from it. I mean, I could talk about it for a lot more because there was a lot to it. Um, I really did enjoy it. This book is considered, um, you know, could be definitely vintage science fiction from 1964, but considered a world classic of science fiction. I think by many people, and I can really see why uh, sort of alongside Roadside Picnic just some really good you know science fiction from the mid 20th century um, I do hope to read um, I've got definitely maybe which is another one of their works um, coming up um, I'm probably gonna put um, that may end up on my must read list for next year but I'm definitely gonna read what uh what is what are the Sergatsky brothers that I can find in English uh, I'm going to chip away at and, and, and get through. So I'll stop the chat with that. Um, what I am currently reading is um, Washington, The Making of the American Capital by Fergus M. Bordowicz. Um Yeah, this is a uh, book, a nonfiction work about the uh, how Washington came to, be, how the site for Washington, D.C. came to be chosen and the building of the city of Washington, D.C. as the capital of the United States. I got interested in this book. I actually have owned this book for a while, but had never read it. And then after reading Lincoln and the Bardo, I got real interested to read something else pertaining to Washington, D.C. So I'm about two-thirds of the way through this book. I should finish this very soon, possibly tonight, but probably tomorrow. And then my next planned read is planned to be Kiss of the Spider Woman by Manuel Puig. This book came out in, um, let's see, originally, um, does it give the, t the original date? I think in the 70s. This particular edition is from 1991. This is a uh, UK edition that I somehow wound up with as a used copy that I bought this used copy. This story takes place in Argentina of I think the 1970s and it's two prisoners in a prison. One's a political prisoner and one is a homosexual jailed for some sort of morals charge and um, their uh, interaction that they have um, and that the the I guess the uh, experience that they have in the prison as well as the um, influence that each of them end up having on each other's lives. So this was made into a movie. I've been meaning to read this since the movie came out in the uh, in the 1980s and it fell off my radar for about 30 years. <laughs> and then I, I thought of it again recently and thought, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get Kiss of the Spider Woman read because I had been meaning to read it um, for quite some time. So that'll be coming up after uh, Washington, the making of the American Capitol. So I'll close with that. Until next time, take care. Bye.